I'm absolutely thrilled to be here, and I hope that uh, what I share today will be of value at least to some of you. Uh, I'll be talking about uh, an app that I built and released today. Today is the first release day of it. Uh, it's called Video Hub App, and I built it with Angular and Electron. And so I have four goals for today. One goal is to inspire people who are new to Angular. Um, also to show off how amazing Electron is, how really cool Angular pipes are, and how sweet Angular animations are. So these are the four goals. Let's get started. First of all, I think you can do it. Uh, my timeline looks something like this. Uh, I've been working on personal projects by myself. I had a couple of small clients that wanted like uh, WordPress work. And so I've been uh, doing some web stuff over the course of my life, but only around November of last, uh, in 2016, did I discover that actually I can become a full-time web developer. Previously, I was a math teacher. Uh, so I applied and I got a job in November at Forbes. Uh, in February, they, even though I was working with PHP, they said, hey, you want to try Angular? I didn't know what it was, but I thought, of course, this is a new exciting technology. And then uh, by around November last year, I felt like I actually could do things with it, uh, not just at work, but also outside. And I started my little project, and today I have something to show for it. So in a relatively little bit of time, um, I was able to do something. Well, let's see, what did I accomplish? This is a scary live um, thing. So um, I've made this app. I think I'll drag it over. And what it does is it basically displays images of videos that you have in your computer. How do they get there? Well, you import them. So let's see how that works. You start the wizard, you name the thing, let's call it test. Uh, you select an input directory. Sorry, I have a small screen. Input directory, just uh, some videos on there. Then you choose an output directory, could be the same place, it doesn't much matter. Uh, pick the size of your screenshots, and let's import it. Hooray, it's, it's there. So uh, it imported everything instantly, it uses file system uh, interactions, and then uh, using FFmpeg, it extracted the screenshots of this. So now my little app has the ability to preview this, and you can see things are pretty quick. Um, there's different ways of viewing it. I don't know. Uh, and you can have other collections. So here's a collection that my friend gave me uh, this video. But uh, the basic thing that I wanted to show you was, here's an app that is on the computer. It is able to interact with your file system, and um, I think it's kind of cool. All right, so let's move on. I'll tell you what Electron is. Uh, so if you ever were curious to try and think maybe it's a lot to learn or it's like new stuff, it turns out to be very, very easy. So basically, Electron is just a node packaged together with Chromium, which is basically Google Chrome. And together, it provides you APIs that you could use to interact with the file system. I'm sorry, with the operating system. And so if you want to minimize the window, you just tell Electron, Hey, minimize the window, and it's done. So the upshot is that Electron can output an app for Mac, for Windows, for Linux, and you are already using some of these apps. Uh, these, these four, for example, were all built in Electron, and that means you have one code base, but you can support all three main operating systems. So how does this work? Uh, I started with Angular Electron, which is just a bootstrap, uh, kind of a pre-made project that you can just clone and get started right away. And it is very, very simple. So uh, you might not be able to see some of the code if it's a little small, but I have all the slides shared on SlideShare. Um, I'll, I'll share the link afterwards, it's on my Twitter. So in your component, you have uh, injected a service, Electron, it's provided to you by the bootstrap, and now let's use it. Let's say you have a minimize method. Uh, you're going to refer to the uh, Electron service, and you're going to just send a message. Along with the message, you can pass in whatever data you'd like. Here you have a, a file that node gets to see and gets to run. And so you're able to tell it to do things like scan your file system, delete files, whatever you'd like. And in this particular case, I'm listening for the minimize message. And then I'm taking in the sum data, the data that's been passed in. And of course, I can log it and do whatever you'd like. And here's an example of how easy it is to interact with the operating system. You just say, hey, browser window, um, just please focus on it first and minimize it. 
Now let's send a message back. It's as simple as before. You simply have a method, doesn't matter what you call it, and then you just say, hey, Angular. Oh, oh Angular app. Uh, Angular app is the event. So um, when the message comes from Angular, it is stored as an event. Uh, on first message, I just stored it as an Angular app, the, you know, a variable. And so now I say, hey, Angular app, listen to this. And you can send over progress along with some data. And then in Angular, all you have to do in your, uh, on init is just listen to this particular message, take it, and do whatever you'd like with it. So you have this full round trip in, what, six lines of code? Nine. Um, I hope it's pretty, pretty easy, and I hope you see that you can get started right away without learning anything new. You just have a couple of little um, code pieces to look up. So when you're done writing your app, you just look at your Electron Builder file. So Electron uh, is able to bundle everything into an app, and there are a, bun um, a few big bundlers, uh, um, systems that will bundle all your, uh, all your files for you. I'm using Electron Builder. It just came with the other bootstrap that I was using. Very, very easy to use. So you just define the name, you describe some settings. For example, I'm using NSIS. Uh, it's a one-click installer, basically double-click on Windows, and it installs the whole app, and everything is excellent. Uh, you can uninstall it from within Windows. It automatically remembers the, the version of the file. It will even tell you, hey, the, the, the program is open. Let me close it for you to install a new version. It's fantastic. And so you basically just set up your instructions however you'd like, and then you run a single command, npm run electron Windows, and you get a Windows XE file. NPM on Electron Mac, you get Mac, and of course you get Linux. Very, very easy, uh, takes very little time. My app takes uh, maybe three minutes to build from running the command to having an executable that you can just send to anyone, and it'll work on your computer. Of course, it's an installation file, but anyway. Developing is a pleasure in Electron. You have complete access to the uh, Chrome developer tools, so it is basically like using the regular Google Chrome to develop the app, except that it is live on your computer and is able to interact with the operating system. And in the background, of course, you're running Node, and you get to see the console logs if you ever need to, what is happening uh, on the other side. And some miscellaneous notes. So uh, when you build your app and you want to console log things, but you can no longer do that because you have no access to your uh, to the uh, Chrome DevTools or the Node instance running. Uh, you can just log things quite, quite easily with uh, show message box. So that's just a, a method that a, uh, Electron provides for you so that you can have your operating system to put up a little message box. Easy enough. Uh, if you feel like making an app and you don't think you have the skills to make it look pretty or just don't feel like wasting time on it or being finicky about it, uh, there's something called Photon Kit. It's just a bunch of CSS. You download it, put it into your app, instantly it looks like a Mac app. Really easy. I haven't done this, but I've heard it's possible. Maybe it's a little tricky, but it's possible to include a, a database into your app. So SQLite is just a single file database. And you can you know, imagine what you can do with that. And lastly, this gave me a bit of trouble as I was building things. Uh, one of the tools I was using was uh, FFmpeg. What it does is extracts the screenshots from your videos, but it's basically kind of like an executable. And when Electron bundles your app, it puts a lot of things into a single file, and that executable can no longer run. So what you need to do is you need to tell either, hey, don't do that, so you just turn off the ASAR, ASAR. Uh, or what is recommended, and this is what I did, I simply unpack those particular things that I was using and then had to refer to them in a slightly different way. So just something to watch out for if you start using other scripts outside of just your regular node code. So that's, uh, that's Electron. Uh, now, one of my favorite things, uh, one of my favorite things, pipes. I absolutely love pipes. I don't know why it is, but Angular makes them so cool so usable, so useful. They've been around since 1973. Okay, so let's take a look. Uh, typically, a pipe works like this. You have in your template uh, some 
a words, and then you put in a variable, and then you say, hey, let's make that variable display in a different way. Maybe you want to format it a certain way. So you could do that. Well, the other cool thing about pipes is you can just chain them one after the other. So maybe you can take the birthday and you can convert it to a date format, but then also uppercase things. Uh, but what I absolutely love is just throwing everything in. I don't recommend you do this. This, isn't, this is probably not a very good idea, but in my app, it works very well, very quickly, and at least for now, I'm just going to keep it there. So what's happening here? I have a huge array with all my files uh, passed into the view so that it will be displayed to the user, and then I just pass it through every single search parameter that I have. So maybe I'm searching through um, the folders, maybe I'm searching through the files, maybe I'm searching inclusively or exclusively. So what you see here is the same exact pipe being reused again and again with just different parameters passed in. There's probably a different way of organizing it, but I did it this way, it worked, and I was happy. I even have a little pipe to count the number of uh, results that I have. I have another pipe that allows you to shuffle things, and I also have a pipe that will actually insert elements into the array in case I want to display the folder name uh, on the list. So even though there's a lot happening, you saw the app is pretty quick. So let's look at the anatomy of a pipe. Uh, if you haven't used them before, super easy to use, lots of fun. Basically, just declare a name. Here's a name. It says length pipe, and that's how you're going to refer to it. Um, the pipe uh, implements a transform, and what that is is basically a method. You pass in some stuff, and it returns some stuff. That's it. So you transform the input, in my particular case, the number of seconds, and then you just return it. So in my, in my example, what I'm formatting is uh, the little time indicator of how long the video is. And this happens super quickly, and it happens uh, across all the videos. Um, so pipes are really fast and really awesome. Let's see, pipes come in two flavors, and you have to watch out for that. There's the pure and there's the impure. And basically, pure is the default, and that's what I'm using everywhere. If you want impure pipes, you're going to have to enable it. You have to explicitly say, hey, Angular, this is really not pure. So what's the big difference? Uh, the pure pipes are going to only change when a string or a number or the Boolean input is going to change, or the object reference of the data or the function or object. And so um, in my case, I have an array that's getting passed in. It is not changing because the original content is always there. So what I did to trick uh, Angular to update the thing is I included a Boolean that I just toggle whenever I do the search. And then it says, oh, one of the inputs has changed. Let me run through the transform. You might think, well, why not just do impure? Well, impure can be useful, but be careful. It's, it's kind of dumb. It will, <laughs> it will run change detection every time your mouse moves, every time a keystroke happens, timer ticks. It's not a very good thing to use unless you really need it. So just yeah. let's take a look. Uh, and this is just, a, I think, a pretty standard example of using a pipe transform. You pass in an array. You simply run a dot filter method on it. And then you just return true or false. Really fast, really easy. Um, works like a charm. OK. So this is not something I recommend, but this is something I did once just for fun. I actually was piping, well, <laughs> I, I, I would put in a Boolean into a pipe. The pipe would then call a service, and the service, with its internal logic, would keep track of what came before, and then would give you an answer. Uh, not a good way to do it, but it actually worked. So pipes seem to be very flexible, um, which, I don't know, I think is really awesome. So pipes, let's take a look. My app, where are pipes? I've got a search pipe, another search pipe, another search pipe. Every, uh, every time I run a search, it tells me how many items it has found. That's simply a pipe giving me an output, and then I just list, uh, throw it there. I have a pipe that is showing me a word cloud. So at the end of the search results, it simply takes every single input, sends it over to a service. The service takes a, kind of a histogram and then spits it out for me to show the histogram. And of course, I have pipes on every single time indicator showing how many seconds there are. Pipes everywhere. Um, I also have pipes to show me the folder. 
So in this particular case, uh, I had a folder path that included slashes, but I didn't think that was pretty enough. So what I did is I put it into a pipe, which actually outputs HTML, and the HTML includes the little arrows, which I think are more aesthetically pleasing. So pipe, 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 and of course, the whole thing is basically a pipe. I love it. So uh, now it's time for animations. Animations are amazingly easy and angry. So let's take a look. If you are doing things the traditional old way manually, here's how it looks. Let's say you have an element, and you're not trying to hide it. You're actually trying to destroy it, maybe with an ng if, uh, because you don't want to gunk up your DOM. So manually, what you'll need to do, of course, is the Boolean to keep track of whether it's shown or hidden. You're going to need uh, some CSS animations, pretty standard. But now you're going to have to keep track of where in progress this thing is happening because you want to maybe turn it on, show it, have the transition from opacity 0 to opacity 1 because you can't really transition from nothing to 1. In, and then you also, you also need set timeouts. You're going to need set, set timeouts for disappearing and logic for interruptions. Really messy, really annoying. If you've ever done it, it sucks. Well, in Angular, oh yeah, and it's not reusable, more or less. In Angular, all you have to do is just say if, if the thing is shown or not shown, then you're not, and then some CSS animation, and you're done. Angular handles it for you. It's so cool. So let's take a look. Uh, you define animations according to uh, the way Angular wants you to define them. They are um, there's kind of a syntax for it. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll walk through it a little bit in a moment. Then in your component, you simply refer to the animation, saying, hey, component, I might use this animation in the template, watch out. And then in the template, you just say, hey, let's use this animation. So what does it look like? Uh, you call this, uh, I guess, a trigger word or something. It's the thing that you're going to refer to when you want the animation. Uh, you give a variable, and then you pass it in. Of course, you can put the entire animation into your component, but by having the animations in a separate file, you're able to reuse them wherever you want across your whole animation. Uh, uh, across your whole application, and this can make the whole experience quite seamless. And so after you have defined it and declared it, you can use it and reuse it again and again and again across your entire app. Hey, there's a pen. Okay, so um, the animations are, I think, silky smooth, and because it's so incredibly easy to implement them, uh, I just put them everywhere. And I recommend and I urge you to do that in your own apps or wherever it is that you're doing this because it takes very little effort to get really beautiful uh, user experience. And the other thing is you can't really glitch it out. I tried and no matter what, destroying, creating elements, running several animations at the same time, it just, it just works. And I don't know, animations are amazing. Okay. And last tidbit, I don't know how interesting this is, but at the end, after I was done developing the app, I realized, wait, I'm using a web technology. This thing should work online as well. So I put the whole application online, and it actually works on the web. Um, I put it up on a website and made it look like it's the operating system right here. Of course, it's all fake. But the app is not fake, and you know it can do live search so that no, no, no. Anyway, you get the idea. It's the same app. It's on the web. Of course, it can't interact with your operating system because it's on the web, but I, I thought it was kind of a neat bonus to have a, a desktop application on the web. This, none of this would be possible without the amazing and tremendous work of so many people. And of course, without the Angular, this wouldn't be possible without Node or Electron. I used a lot of open source projects. I'm sorry, a lot of open source, yeah, open source projects. Uh, that saved me a lot of time and it's been wonderful. Thank you to Forbes for teaching me so much along the way and thank you to some developers that have particularly helped me out over the years. Uh, and thank you for being here. I hope you found something of value.